the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All the earth worships you, O Lord. They sing praises to you, sing praises to your name. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to worship with St. John Lutheran Church. I'm glad you could be here today. This is the second Sunday after Epiphany. In our gospel reading this morning, we hear Jesus call disciples, and we hear the story of disciples calling new disciples. It's a mission, uh, a mission lesson to us, which we'll talk about more in our sermon this morning. Uh, nothing unusual. We have some psalms that are printed at the offering and at the communion time, but they're on the screen, they're in the pamphlet, so just follow along there as usual. And I invite you to stand as you're able. We'll begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How wonderful he is in his doing toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot. And there we rejoiced in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A 
reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow, had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was laying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was laying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son? He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsibly. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you, because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my life would need to be like yours. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. 
you discern my thoughts from afar. A reading from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. The Lord sent out his word and healed those who cried to him and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Alleluia. We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who brings us grace and truth. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just a little filling in of the blanks in our gospel reading today before, before we talk about the content of that gospel reading. As the, the, as the lesson begins, we have those first few words, the next day. The day before that it's referring to is the day when Jesus has called Andrew and Philip, uh, sorry, Andrew and Peter. Remember, they are brothers. Um, and it is the next day then that Jesus calls the next disciple, Philip. And we're told that Andrew and Peter and Philip are all from the same the same town of Bethsaida. As the story goes in our gospel reading, Philip goes off to get his friend, Nathaniel. So you see how the church is being grown by the invitation of relatives and friends. He goes off to, to gather Nathaniel and says, we've found the one that Moses wrote about in the scriptures, the prophets wrote about in the scriptures. We have this phrase from Nathaniel that seems to be a bit of a scorn. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But it appears that Nathaniel was a student of his scriptures, and he knew that the Messiah would come from Bethlehem, not Nazareth. So I don't think it is as disdainful as we might imagine. He's asking his friend Philip, how can this be? 
If Jesus is from Nazareth, how can he be the Messiah? Philip says, come and see. As he approaches Jesus, he hears Jesus speak about him. And he asks Jesus, how did you get to know me? And then presumably, we are to take it that when Philip left Jesus to call Nathanael, it was out of sight of Jesus, somewhere other than where Jesus could see what was going on. But Jesus says, I saw you before Philip came to you. As a revelation of the power that is in him. Nathanael makes his confession. You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus invites him to, to think even beyond the kingship of Israel. You will see the heavens open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, who is the King of all. The King of all. So that fills in some blanks in our reading. But there's a content here, because as I said at the very beginning of service, this is, a, this is a mission reading. This is about evangelism and outreach and invitation. This is how the church grows through invitation. Andrew to his brother Peter, Philip to his friend Nathaniel. And it goes on throughout the scriptures, into the book of Acts, into the writings of Paul. And it's an important reminder to us today of the need for evangelism, for mission, for invitation, for outreach. To illustrate the point, a story. A child comes to you. I don't know if it's your child or a grandchild or a neighbor child, for the sake of the story. A child comes to you and says, I don't feel right. Something's not right. I'm just not happy. I, don't, I just don't feel right. So, Bring the child in your house. Make sure he's well clothed and has shoes, and, uh, has a comfortable place to sit. A little while later, the child says, you know, I I'm feeling even more weak. I'm feeling even more tired. Well, you say, well, let me turn on the TV. Let me, let me turn on some music. Here are some toys to play with. Here's some things to, to entertain you and distract you. And for a while, it works child is comfortable, doesn't complain. But eventually again, the child says, I'm still just not feeling right. I'm not well. So maybe you get live music, or you get actors, or you, you up the ante and you, you, you make a, a bigger place for them to play in. And what is needed is food. Without food, the child will die. We live in a world. We live in an enlightened, postmodern, post-Christian age that doesn't know what it needs. Because we live in a world that's decided that it's all about the stuff that is here. And we don't really need a transcendent being. We don't really need God. We don't really need Jesus. We just need entertainment. We just need to be distracted. But without the food that brings life, there is only death. In this enlightened, postmodern, post-Christian age that tries to live without the, the, the transcendent, that tries to live without God, we are left with only this. Birth is merely an accident. Living is without purpose. Suffering is meaningless. And death is the absolute end. I hope that is none of your perspectives. I hope that you know that God is there to make a different perspective on life to teach a truth that birth is special creation by God and life has purpose and suffering is meaningful when connected to the sufferings of Christ and death is but a passageway to eternal life. Without God, we're just a speck of conscious dust in the swirling emptiness of a universe of dirt 
that has a lonely existence for a fraction of a second in cosmic time. Nothing knows or cares or remembers us past a few other specks. And given the perspective that we live without God, we're left with nothing but seeking power or pleasure or our own self-esteem. Power, right? Influence, wealth, perhaps physical strength or tribal military might or political power. Think about how the world yearns for these things as if they are the things that are the most important. Not so for those who believe, who know that life is found in God, not in power, wealth, influence, physical strength, military might. Without God, we try to fill in the gaps with pleasure. Simple things like food, or sex, or alcohol, or drugs, or entertainment, or gambling, or shopping. Think again about how many people's lives are connected to these things. What great loss they think they would feel if they were separated from those things that fill in their time so they don't feel the emptiness of being without God. We who believe know that the meaning of life is found in God revealed in Jesus Christ and the world is yearning for that message, looking in all the wrong places, waiting for us to invite them to point the way. We have found him, says Philip to his friend Nathaniel. We have found him. Moses declares to the people, you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you search after him with all your heart and soul. The Lord promises through the prophet Jeremiah, when you call upon me and pray and come to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. Jesus reminds us of the same in the Gospels. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. The meaning of life is not found in self-esteem or power or pleasure, but in relationship with God. We call that faith. We call that belief. And the world will continue to languish as long as it avoids relationship with God. Just as Philip goes to his friend Nathaniel and says, We have found him to one who is seeking. Clearly, Nathaniel is seeking because he's consulting the scriptures. Philip says, We found him about whom Moses and the Torah and also the prophets wrote. We too are sent to invite our friends come and see. How often? we find something we're not looking for? Not very often, right? You, you miss it first, and then you look for it, and then you find it. Occasionally, you might run across them and go, oh yeah, that's not in the place it's supposed to be. But you didn't even realize it was lost. How much more successful are we in finding something when we are concentrating on looking for it? Even more so if we know where or how to look. You and I are called to be guides about where or how to look for the meaning of life, relationship with God in Jesus Christ. That's what we are reminded of in this gospel reading today. In the large catechism, as Luther writes about baptism, he writes this wonderful metaphor. Suppose there were a physician who had such skill that people would not die or even though they died would be restored to life and would afterward live forever. 
Just think how the world would snow and rain money upon him. Because of the pressing crowd of rich people, no one could get near him. Here in baptism is brought free to every person's door just such a priceless medicine which swallows up death and saves the lives of all. We are the messengers of the great physician who would seek to heal the world. And while the world pours its wealth upon power and pleasure and self-esteem, those who believe know that relationship with God and Jesus Christ is what brings eternal life, what brings meaning in, even in the midst of suffering, that gives purpose to living, that reminds us that our birth is creation for God's sake, out of God's great love, shown us in Jesus Christ. Come and see, we are invited to say, we have found him, God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Peace of Christ be with you always. God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For all Christians, called into the fellowship and priesthood of Jesus Christ, by whose incarnation and great work of salvation heaven is open to sinners, that we may have boldness to cling to God's faithful call 
speaking his deliverance freely in all the world. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the church here and throughout the world, that God would send forth laborers into his harvest and sustain those he has sent. For Elizabeth, presiding bishop, Joy, our synod bishop, for members of our congregation council, and those who celebrate the anniversary of baptism this week, Daniel Johnson, Lori Madison, Tammy Brotheridge, Krista Anosenti, Heather Duos, Stacy Kutz, Lori Craig, Levon Struli, and Taylor Yutzig, that God would make all Christians bold in confession and unwavering in prayer. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For courage and constancy to treasure God's gift of holy marriage and family, that those bought with a price, made temples of the Holy Spirit, would be preserved in true love, glorifying God with their whole lives. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our nation with its leaders, that the Almighty Lord, who does whatever seems good to him and from whom every lawful authority on earth comes, would uphold us in righteousness and health. For Joseph, our president-elect, for Camilla, our vice president-elect, Anthony, our governor, and all public servants, including our armed forces, police, and first responders, and for peace in our time, let us pray. Have mercy, O God all who stand in need of our prayers, especially Doris, the family of Clarice, the family of Doris, Kim, Penny, Ron, Tim, Becky, Larry, Carlene, Jennifer, Mary Ellen, John, Ada, Terry, Judy, Jean, Carl, Lorraine, Virginia, Bill, Roseanne, Judy, Al, Lorenzo, Carol, Melanie, Jody, Dick, Chris, Wanda, Jessica, Janet, Annette, Lois, Karen, Patty, Bev, Jennifer, all those affected by COVID-19, and those we name silently or loud. That God would bring healing, comfort, strength, patience, and certainty to every need, and thanksgiving for constant watch and merciful kindness, and that in every sorrow and every joy, God would not let our eyes be drawn from the great marvel of his kindness in Christ Jesus, by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive every blessing. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all who commune this day, that the gift of the Holy Spirit would be renewed in us, working true contrition to lament and abandon our sins, and so receive in confident faith Christ's body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we acknowledge that you own and love this whole creation. Nevertheless, receive what we offer here as if it were our own, that we may add substance to our Eucharist for life and health and light and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. 
I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join our unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Amen. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Receive and be fed. Thanks be to God. Please be seated as we recite the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace.
Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those whose spirits are crushed. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Remain standing. Uh, announcements are pretty straightforward. Please consult the yellow page of things. There's an insert there about uh, a fundraiser for Crop Walk. Yes, Crop Walk is coming up now that we're moving through into the new year. In about 15 minutes, we will begin a budget question and answer time, uh, presentation of the budget, and an opportunity to ask questions, and hopefully we have answers for that. We have to do some technological setup things through the magic of the internet. Uh, some folks will be online with us for that meeting, but we ask for patience, and I'll have more directions for how that's going to work at 1010. So uh, there'll be a post suit at the end of our service. I invite you to, to, to remain right where you are if you're going to stay for the meeting. If you need a, a pink budget sheet, you'll have to wander back to the tables and, and bring one up. Uh, please converse over the pews for the next 15 minutes, and we'll kind of call things to order at 1010. There is a prayer to conclude our day and then the dismissal. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you govern both your heaven and this earth. Mercifully hear your people's prayers for peace in our time. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.